The mighty Amazon isn't just a river, it's a cradle of life. Stretching over a staggering 7,062 kilometers, it's a realm of endless wonder. In these serene backwaters, amidst aquatic jungles and tea-tinted waters, the angelfish dance their eternal dance. Here, they find solace behind large leaves, chase after insects amongst tall grasses, and bask in the dappled sunlight. As we dive into the world of keeping angelfish, one truth stands out. Space is paramount. It's not just about where the tank sits in your home, but the spacious realm you're crafting for your angelfish. These creatures, with their poised grace, deserve a home where they can stretch, grow and truly live. Though they start small, angelfish can grow up to six inches long and eight inches tall. Imagine growing and feeling confined. For a pair, you'd want at least a 20 gallon tank. But I always say, give them room to roam. A 55 gallon tank is ideal for a small group. And if you're thinking community vibes with other species, go even bigger. And don't forget the vertical space. Angelfish are tall and love to explore heights. When it comes to water, it's their life source. It needs to be just right. Angelfish come from waters with a pH between 6.0 to 7.5. They can adapt a bit, but sudden swings, not their favorite. And while we're at it, let's talk water hardness. They prefer it soft to moderately hard, but if your tap's giving you hard water, a piece of driftwood or some peat moss can help soften it. Keep a close eye on ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate levels. A well-maintained tank should have near zero levels of the first two and keep nitrates under 20 ppm. And the temperature? Think cozy between 76 Fahrenheit to 82 Fahrenheit. As you set up your tank, think of it as creating an underwater masterpiece. The substrate is your canvas. Soft sands or fine gravel, reminiscent of the Amazon riverbeds, are perfect. Then come the plants. Angelfish love them. Amazon swords, Anubias and Java fern are just a few favorites. And while we're decorating, a piece of driftwood or a smooth rock can be the perfect centerpiece. Just ensure there's enough open space for your angelfish to swim freely. Lighting is more than just illumination. It sets the mood. In the wild, angelfish enjoy the soft, dappled sunlight of the Amazon rainforest. So, in captivity, a moderate LED light does wonders. Consistency is key. 8 to 12 hours of light and then some rest in the darkness. And temperature consistency? just as crucial. The warmth of the Amazon has shaped their preference. Keep it steady to keep them happy. And finally, the unsung hero, the filtration system. Three types to remember. Mechanical, biological, and chemical. Mechanical filters trap and remove waste. Biological ones house good bacteria that break down harmful substances, maintaining a stable environment, and chemical filters. They remove impurities, but use them judiciously. There's an old saying, you are what you eat. This couldn't be truer when thinking about our angelfish friends. Their health, vibrancy, and energy are all tied to their diet. In the wild heart of the Amazon, angelfish are versatile eaters, feasting on everything from small insects to plant bits. In our home aquariums, while they love high quality flakes and pellets, they appreciate a varied menu. Think of it this way, wouldn't you get bored eating the same dish every day Live treats like brine shrimp or bloodworms are a great way to mix things up. And a little green in their diet? That's a yes. Some blanched veggies or spirulina-based foods can do wonders. Routine can be comforting. For angelfish, knowing when their next meal is coming can reduce stress. A good rule of thumb, feed adults twice a day. Split their daily food amount into two portions. For the little ones, they're growing and need more. So three to four smaller meals a day should do the trick. And if you're heading out for a vacation, a day or two without food is okay for adults. For longer breaks, consider an automatic feeder. It's like a food nanny for your fish. But there's a fine line between the right amount and too much. Overfeeding can dirty the water and even cause an unwanted algae party in your tank. And yes, fish can overeat too. If your angelfish seems a bit rounder or has trouble swimming, it might be time to cut back a tad. On the flip side, underfeeding has its signs too. Sluggish movements, a sunken belly, or even a bit of a temper could mean they're hungry. Feeding might seem simple, but it's an art combined with science. Get it right, and your angelfish will not just survive, but thrive. While angelfish are generally peace-loving souls, they do have their assertive moments. Think of them like the gentle giant of the fish world. Sure, they coexist with many, but when it comes to defending their patch or their young, 
they won't shy away from showing a bit of attitude. Now here's a fun fact, angelfish are vertically inclined. While many fish zip around the tank's width, angelfish prefer the up and down, making the most of the tank's height. So, if you're thinking of tank mates, consider those who like to stick to the bottom, like certain catfish. And a word of caution for those looking forward to baby angelfish, breeding season can be a tad dramatic. Protective parents might chase or nip others getting too close to their precious eggs. It's a good idea to keep an eye out and maybe even give the soon-to-be parents a bit of space. Breeding angelfish is a dance of nature, a blend of art and science right in your aquarium. If you've ever wanted to play matchmaker for these graceful swimmers, here's your playbook. First things first, pair selection. Sometimes letting nature take its course is best. If you notice two angelfish consistently swimming side by side and defending a territory, you've likely got a pair ready to breed. Considering a dedicated breeding tank, a 20 to 30 gallon setup usually does the trick. Populate it with broad-leaved plants or even vertical slate tiles for the female to lay her eggs. For those who love the details, target soft, slightly acidic water with a pH of 6.5 to 7.0. And a pro tip, simulate the rainy Amazonian season with regular water changes. This often gets those breeding instincts going. Now for the menu. Before breeding, treat your angelfish to a buffet of protein-rich foods. Think brine shrimp and bloodworms. It's like their version of date night dining. Then it's showtime. You'll witness the pair's courtship dance, a synchronized and graceful display, leading to the female selecting the perfect spot for her eggs. Once the eggs are laid, both parents go into full guard mode, ensuring their future brood is safe and well oxygenated. Fast forward two to three days and you'll spot the wrigglers. These tiny larvae still feed off their yolk sac, but soon they'll be ready for the big fish world. Now for the kiddos. Once the fry are free swimming, feed them infusoria, progressing to baby brine shrimp as they grow. It's all about small frequent meals. Keep their water clean, stable, and introduce plants like Java moss, for natural hiding spots and potential food sources. Angelfish, with their regal beauty, can sometimes face health challenges. First up, eek or white spot disease. This is one of the most common parasitic infections in angelfish. If you notice tiny white spots, similar to grains of salt, on your angelfish's body or fins, it's a telltale sign. Along with these spots, if your fish seems to be rubbing against objects or breathing rapidly, eek might be the culprit. Quick intervention is key to prevent the spread and ensure a healthy tank environment. Fin rot is another concern. Spotting frayed or discoloured fins, this bacterial infection might be at play. Stress, poor water quality or injuries can make your angelfish susceptible. By maintaining clean water and promptly treating the condition, you can halt its progression. Then there's velvet disease. Not as glamorous as it sounds, this parasitic skin disease might first appear as a subtle yellowish coat giving your angelfish a velvety look. Early detection and treatment are crucial, especially if your angelfish starts showing signs of breathing difficulties. Lastly, if you notice your angelfish looking a bit bloated or its scales sticking out like a pine cone, dropsy could be the issue. It's a bacterial infection that affects the internal organs, leading to visible swelling. While it's a challenge to treat, early detection and care can make all the difference. Understanding and promptly addressing these diseases is crucial for the well-being of your angelfish. Always keep an eye out for any unusual signs and consult resources or experts for guidance. Angelfish are captivating, and naturally, enthusiasts have many questions about their care. Let's address some of the most commonly asked questions. You might wonder, when do angelfish become adults? Well, angelfish typically hit their stride of sexual maturity between six to 12 months. At this age, they're ready to start their own families, and you'll start noticing distinct male and female characteristics. Now, if you're into breeding, here's a tip. Distinguishing between fertilized and unfertilized eggs. Fertilized eggs have a clear amber color while the unfertilized ones. They turn white and might even get a bit fuzzy, thanks to fungal growth. And trust your angelfish parents, they often pick out and discard these unfertilized eggs, keeping the nest clean. And for those raising baby angelfish, the transition to adult food is a milestone. Once those fry look like mini versions of their parents, around an inch in size, you can start introducing them to crushed flake food or teenier pellets. Over time, replace more of the fry food with this adult diet, ensuring they get a well-rounded meal. If you want to read even more about angelfish, take a look at the link in the description. Thanks for watching, 
If you liked the video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to me as we bring more videos and episodes to you.